He really is. Huh? Yeah. Well, I don't think there's a moment of her over here. You know what? Let me just clarify this, okay? Y'all know on TV, I put it that someone got in the wreck, and once they found out who it was, they sent me an email that said, The Mexican? <laughs> now look, his last name is Boudreau. <laughs> Boudreau and Tipido, okay? Boudreau, all right? I'm the one that called him the Mexican because when he plays that one song, I told him, I said, man, you sound like a Mexican playing that thing over there, all right? But I'm going to let Boudreau share a moment before I sing some more because Boudreau will tell you what happened and the reason why he ain't playing his guitar up here this morning and I'm by myself. But come on, share her. See? Good morning. It's good to be in the barn today. Praise the Lord. Amen? Yes. Hey, listen. God has not promised you tomorrow. Anytime. It could be your time. Well, Friday a week ago wasn't my time. But uh, I kissed the back end of a pickup truck doing about 50-something miles an hour. And uh, it was my fault. So pay attention. Uh... It can get kind of rough for an old man to be rolling down the highway at about 50 miles an hour. But God had his hand of mercy upon me, and he used people like Pastor T to come to my aid, and Paul and, and others that I just, you know, everyone reached out. And what a blessing it was to have the family of God reaching out to help a brother. Amen? Amen. And that's how we are. That's how we ride, right? We stick together. We take care of one another. God's been good to me. I'm going to be fine. I broke a few bones in my hand, bruised a few ribs, a couple scrapes and scratches here and there. But we're going to make it. And praise the Lord, I think my bike's going to make it too. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! Yeah, I was about 45 degrees this way, looking at it, laying, rope, laying sliding on its side, and I'm going like, oh, my bike! <laughs> But I'm glad I can be here and laugh today, right? Because last week a laugh would have killed me. I was like, oh, don't make me laugh. But it's been good. It's been good. Last night I had my best night. And this is where I wanted to be with you guys today. So I can't play for a little while. But rest assured, the Lord's going to bring me back. I'll be picking again. Amen? Give a raise hand. Now, Dave, go on and make your way up here. If you don't mind, we got one other little thing we need to do. David, Myers, yeah. We have a pen called the Hallelujah Pen. The Thank You Jesus Pen. And the guys that pass out with In the Wind Ministries, they drop their bike or crash their bike. We don't give them a stupidity award. We give God an award as a symbol for how He protects us. So, well, where you at, honey? Go on down there and get your Hallelujah Pen.
where God was. In fact, he used to tie a string around the priest's foot and bail upon his vessel, upon on his tassel of his, of his long garment. And if the bell stopped ringing, they would pull him out because that means that God killed the priest because he wasn't pure to come in before him. See, the song says, Take me past the outer courts. Take me past the praise and altars. Take me past where the priests are singing your praise. And there was this curtain, the veil. And you couldn't go any further than that because it separated God's people from His holiness. And the writer says, Take me in to the Holy of Holies. When Jesus died upon the cross of Calvary, when He stood between heaven and hell, and His arms were spread, someone said the nails kept Him on the cross. No, His love for us is what kept Him on the cross. Because no longer did He want man separated from Him, and He wanted man to be able to have fellowship. And that's what God did. God walked and talked with Adam and Eve, but sin came in and separated them from their rightful place. The Bible says when he cried out and said it is finished, that the earth shook. And the veil in the temple was torn from the top to the bottom. Now that veil wasn't torn so God could get out. That veil was torn so that you and I could get in on the inside. Amen. So that you and I, no matter where we came from, no matter what our past, no matter what our situations today, whether you and I
do. I do. You know, each and every week and each and every month we take this moment. And we open up the altars because sometimes life can be tough. And I'm very excited about what I'm going to get to speak on today. We've got our group from Arkansas that is here, amen. And, and Charles is here. Give him a great hand. Sam is here. Destiny, they're going to sing for us in a minute. We've got some, a baptism at the end of service, huh? Amen? Yeah. We're going to be recognizing a senior today. Yeah, yeah. They got that red motorcycle over there with that rebel flag looking for the direct stuff on it. Hand painted. And this is graduation motorcycle, and so we're going to be blessing it. Yeah. And then we got a wedding renewal. Huh? You know, you got to really love somebody. To marry twice. Not be a sinner. But this is what I've learned. Sometimes life is tough. And when life is tough, I mean, know our God is greater than that. And, and we're going to be talking about today, but some of you are facing situations and obstacles and circumstances and your past and addictions. And I'm going to tell you something. You may have, you may have been told that you can beat it on your own, but I'm going to tell you, you can't. But you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Woo! Yeah, yeah. And I just want to say that I think it's about time that, that we just say, God, we need your help. Amen. And so in these moments, as I play and sing, we're going to open up these altars. Our prayer team is ready. They'll come down when you start making your way here. Each and every month, we spend some time in prayer. Because I don't know what you're going through. I know I'm going to send my brother Herb wherever he is. Because Herb needs to... A miracle of God. God's already done a miracle. But I want Him to do more miracles. He will need no surgery. And I'm believing that next month. I'm, believing, I'm just declaring that and believing it in my heart. I'm not God. But I trust Him. That next month He's going to be playing the guitar up here with me again. And we'll be playing that Mexican song. Alright? Yeah. But we're going to pray. And there are others of you that need prayer. So... As I start to sing, why don't you just make your way right now, okay? How great is our God? How great is our God?
Now fill me forth with your fire. Fill me with your fire. Lift my hands in worship, Lord. Lift my voice in praise. God bless you. We're going to take just a few moments, but we'll see you in just a moment.
dirty. But that girl can sing, huh? Yeah, come on, give us one more great big hand. That is very, very awesome. Girl, come give me a hug, man. And she was all up here before service, and she was going... And I said, so you got to put your face in that microphone. Amazing. Man, you turn the cameras on. Boom! There she is, huh? Yeah! Give her a great big hand. Before we start, I want us to do something that's very important right now. Because just a few minutes ago, we got a call, and, and we don't know who this person is, but they were involved in a little motorcycle, well, not a little motorcycle accident. There is no such thing, but a motorcycle accident. And, and I don't know the status, and no one here knows the status, but how many of you know God just says, call upon me? Uh, and so will you join me right now? Will you just pray for them, all that were involved, the paramedics that are working the scene? Just, just pray that God move up on the family. I know that, that, that this is the last thing that they want to hear on this day. But Lord, we're just praying, and we're coming together in prayer, in belief, Father. And Lord, we've seen you so many times just stretch out your hand and what looks terrible and negative to man becomes positive and a blessing before you. Lord, our brother Herb is a beautiful example of that. 55 mile an hour, run into the back of a truck. And he's here. And he'll live. And he'll play again. And Lord, we ask this morning that our hearts are mingled together. And if one has sent a thousand, how many can a couple of hundred send? Lord, we're praying for that family. We're praying for the paramedics. But Lord, we are praying right now for that man, that woman, that person involved in that motorcycle accident. Lord, we pray that your hand be upon them. And we ask it together in great belief. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You believe it? Then we, we studied in Isaiah 54, verse 17. How do you remember that? It says, no weapon formed shall, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Now notice, it did not say that we would not have battles. That people would not bring weapons against us. That the enemy would not come against us with his weaponry. But it says, no weapon formed against you shall what? Prosper. prosper. It goes on to say, and every tongue that rises up against you in judgment... Let me say that again. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment. And here the writer says, you, Lord, you, capital you, God will condemn. Now, wait a minute. I don't know if you heard that. Listen, no weapon form. I don't care about your past. I'm sorry. If you want to cry on somebody's shoulders about your past, you've come to the wrong place. We've all had messed up past. We've always gone. We've all done things that have made us a cattywampus, a little off center, right? Listen, we've all been through battles. We've all had heartaches. And yes, our heart feels for you, but that's not an excuse because I want you to hear me and hear me well today that when I acknowledge Him, God is going to direct my past. God is directing my past in 2015. Not my friends. Not my family. I'm waking up. Listen, you messed up your life enough in the past. Some of you are ministers. And your ministry has fallen because, let me just be honest with you, blame it on this, blame it on that, but you need to just blame it on yourself because I can tell you God was not directing your past because He won't direct you to quit. He says that the gifts of God are without repentance. Some of you got on fire one time for God and you stopped. You got mad. Situations, circumstances come against you. Listen, it does not say that you won't go through the valley of the shadow of death. Amen. It doesn't say that weapons won't come against you. But it does say when they do come against you that God is going to be there. He's going to direct your path through them. It looks like it might not be anything. It looks like there might be death at the end. But how many of you know God is in control? But Isaiah 54, 17 says, listen, no weapon. Didn't say that we wouldn't have any weapons. No weapon formed against you is going to prosper. But listen to the last four or five words. This is the heritage of 
his servants. I have an inheritance. When my daddy passes away, he's 76 years old and rode in on his own motorcycle today. Amen. Looks as dumb as my brother. And we're doing this little thing this week about old Pastor T and young Papa. I don't know. They said he does. He looks younger than you. Hello. Hello. So I cut my hair. <laughs> Listen. What I'm trying to say is, there's no one that's going to prosper against you. And those that rise up and judge you, those that want to judge you, he says God's going to condemn them. God take care of that. You don't even have to fight that battle. But then he says, this is your inheritance. Go home and read it. Don't look at me like Peter standing in the middle of the road with a headlight. Go home and read it because heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will remain forever. And if he said it, he meant it. And if he meant it, I'm going to believe it. Amen. And I'm going to stand upon it. And I'm not going to be defeated. I refuse to go through the rest of my life up and down and all around. Hot today, cold tomorrow. Battling this. Over being overcome by this. I come today just to stand up and say, God, it's my inheritance. It's my heritage, Lord, to be blessed by you. Come on. Just tell him that, Lord, it's my heritage to be blessed by you. Come on. Give him a great big hand. Yeah. We talked about talk about think big. How many of y'all remember that? Yeah. You're going to run with God? You got what? Think big. Um, victim of stinking thinking. Remember that? Then we talked about you got to pray big. Pray big. Huh? Pray big. Listen, I believe in prayer. I believe that prayer is the key that unlocks the door to heaven. And if you're going to pray, why don't we pray big? If you're going to believe God for the small thing, why can't you believe God for the big thing? It's not too hard for Him. Nothing is impossible with God. Amen. So let's pray big. Let's believe big. Let's pray big. Pray big. Believe God can break you through. And then we talked about, ready? <laughs> Zip it up. Stop telling me why you can't do what God's called you to do. Stop telling me that you're always going to be this way. It's never going to change. But today, I want to talk to you. I want to take a lesson that I learned from Clint Eastwood. How do y'all remember Clint Hello. Eastwood? Huh? Clint Eastwood. Listen, <laughs> he was one of my favorite guys to watch on TV. How many of y'all used to watch it, huh? Yeah, you still do, huh? Listen, when life has us down, I mean, when things come against us, when situations seem to be impossible, when the addictions and the relationships and the evil one has come against you, we already know that, that, that things may come against us. But we've learned that they cannot prosper. It's our inheritance. So I want to teach you to look. I want you to look at those problems today. I want to teach you to stand still, to look up, look at the problems that you're facing, look at the addictions that have you ensnared, look at your failures of the past and your failures of the future, look at your past, and when they raise up their old ugly head, and tell you this is how it's going to be. I want you to be like Clint Eastwood. I want you to stop and look up and say, Go ahead. Make my day. Hey. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Make my day. Because you see, if God is for us, who could be against us? Woo. When God created us, listen to me, church. He gave us everything that we need to succeed. And to be successful. He gave us everything we need to live the life that God has called us to live. To be the person that God's called us to be. He's, he's given us everything. He's put it at our disposal. I mean, we were created. And when He created us, He created us with the talents and the abilities on the inside of us. He created us to be people that, that have ideas. Listen, some of you have ideas that, that are going to change the world, that are on the inside of you. But you let your past and the things that you've been through. I, listen, I believe in my whole heart that the things that you have been through are going to be nothing but building blocks for the things that you're going to go through. Amen. All of those things that were faced. I believe that God has given you favor. Look at me. God has given you favor. 
Stop telling me why you can't do something. And I'm telling you that God has blessed you. God has anointed you. God has given you the talent. God has given you the ability. And God has given you the favor. But you've got to get ready for this. Okay, this will make the TV camera light up. you got to get off your lazy butt and start doing what God's called you to do. Stop blaming on everybody else and everybody else and all in your life. Because you have what you want and you want what you have. Because I come today to tell you, go ahead. Make my day. My past will not defeat me. My past will not destroy me. The situations that have come against me, that's addiction, will not tear me apart. Those that don't like me will not tear me apart. I am going to do what God's called me to do. Have you ever read Psalms chapter 34, verse 10? Psalms chapter 34, verse 10. Mark it down. Go home. It says this, But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. <clears throat> now I didn't just make this up. This is not the gospel according to Pastor T. This is in your Bible. Psalms chapter 34, verse 10. Let me read it to you again and grasp it in your heart. But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Remember what we talked about? If I acknowledge Him, He will what? Direct my paths. When weapons are formed that come against me, what's going to happen to them? They're not going to prosper. And why can't they prosper? Because it's my inheritance. God's giving me an inheritance and it's to walk free, to walk blessed. But now I'm over here and I want you to grasp this today and go ahead and make my day. Is that very simple, clear the words, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Now come on, say it with me. But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. So what does that tell you? It tells me that if I'm seeking good, God's going to bless me. If I'm seeking God, if I'm going through my life and I'm seeking God, then the God that can do all things but fail, the God that is more than a conqueror, if I seek the Lord, I shall not lack any good thing. You want to know how you're going to overcome your past, your problems, your situations? Listen, see, I want us to get it deep down on the inside of us. I want us to know that God has already made a way. That God has already come up with a plan so that you can overcome the issues in your life. See, you may be in a battle today, but God isn't surprised. He's not sitting up in heaven twirling his fingers thinking, oh my God, what do we do now? He's already placed everything and everyone around you that you need to overcome this battle and to move on to be the person. Move on to doing what God has called you to do. Those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Let me help y'all. Those that seek the Lord shall not lack. Any good See, I want you to get that inside of you. Stop telling me how bad your business is. Those that seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Stop telling me how this addiction has got you beat down and you're just not ever going to be able to overcome it. Listen, those that seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. The power, the anointing, the ability, it's all within you already. But if you got a piece of paper, if you don't, do your best. Write it on your phone. Yeah. I'm going to share three things with you today. Very quickly. Three simple things. Three simple, very simplistic thoughts. And maybe you can write it down if you want to, or you can get it on the internet, really. And here's the first one. Three things that's so important. How we see Ourself. Number one. Come on, say it with me. How we see ourselves. See, we, we, we've got to we got to change how we see ourselves. Stop telling me who you once were. God's doing something new in your life and God's changing you. You are a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. You see, 
I have a saying, and I preach a message, and it goes like this. The me I see is the me I'll be. And I got that message when we were building the church down the road where the church is now. We had put, we had some temporary doors up and the glass doors that came in. I was so excited I couldn't wait to see those glass doors. But you had to walk all the way through that big old church to get to the lights to cut them off so you could see. And I just wanted to see the glass doors. Really? Two frames, two glasses. That's what was there. But I went in there and how many of y'all know, you know, I'm not, I'm big as a bear. But I'm more like a teddy bear than anything else. And I got in that church, and you know what? Man, that was a big old building, and everything was popping. And stuff was booming. Man, I started getting a little scared. I mean, I know what I'm talking about, man. Huh? Yeah, man, I'm sneaking up through there. I'm trying to find that light switch. That's, you know, I just back before the days when we had our cell phone when the light happened. Okay? And so I didn't smoke, so I didn't have a cigarette lighter. And so I was walking through there, and I was kind of getting the glare of the parking light kind of shining in there. And I was walking through there, and about that time, I heard something, man, that pulled up real tall and real stand. And I said, excuse me, who's here? And nobody said anything. About that time, just right over to my right, I see the reflection. I stood up real straight, put my bear maneuver on. <laughs> All right? And I said, excuse me, sir, can I help you? And still didn't say anything. So I said, well, I'm going to have to deal with this. So, man, I went to take a big step like I was going to lunge on him. And when I did, I ran smack nose first into that glass. Ah! It was my reflection. I like to bust in our brand new glass. <laughs> Nobody was there. But I learned something. You see, the me I see is the me I'll be. I looked over there and it was me that I saw it. Myself. I, I, I thought there was a robber. I thought there was a mass murderer. I thought that, that, that the exodus had moved into the church before we could bless it. I didn't know what had happened. But I walked smack into that glass and I realized that if you see yourself as a sinner, as an addict, if you see yourself as one that comes from the other side of the tracks or one that's always going to be broke, the me, you, the me I see is the me I'll be. I'm not going to see myself that way. I'm not leaving here today. I'm changing the way that I think about myself. I'm going to change it. You hear me, Miss Glenda? When I leave here today, I'm not coming here the same way. I, I'm not leaving the way I came. I'm changing about my way. I'm going to start thinking about myself differently. Listen. I read this the other day and I thought it was really good because listen. When we change the way that we see ourselves, this is what it says. Are you ready? I'm not a sick person trying to get well. I'm a well person fighting off sickness. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. See a lot of back there? My brother, I'm, I'm not a well person fighting off sick. I mean, I'm not a sick person trying to get well. I'm a well person that's going to have to fight off sickness. And so the Bible's already told me, can I do it? Can I do it? Absolutely I can. Because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. If I acknowledge Him in all of my ways, He'll direct my path. He'll direct me to the right doctor. He'll direct me to the right psychiatrist. <laughs> but listen. I'm not a sick person trying to get well. I'm a well person. And I'm determined in my heart. It's not going to happen to me. So this morning when you got up and you said, Oh, oh, oh my God. I believe God came through the Lord here. <laughs> no, that's just called no age. Huh? Right? I'm a well person. And I'm fighting off sickness. I'm changing the way I'm thinking. Listen, I'm not just a... I'm not a poor person. Trying to get ahead. I come to tell you that you are rich people and you're fighting off property. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I don't think you got that. We are not poor people trying to get ahead. Just trying to make it day to day. Our Father is the what? Richest. He's the richest. He's the, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And He owns the hills. And I have not seen and he have not heard those things that He has prepared for us. 
I'm not so. I refuse to come in today and leave and say, oh, I'm just a poor person. I'm barely trying to get by. No, no, you are the son of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have been adopted into the God vine. Can you say amen? Your father is the king of kings and lord of lords, the great I am, the Jehovah God. He Roha. He is the greatest. Listen, I am rich. But I just got to fight off a little poverty. But the battle's not mine. The battle belongs to the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Come on, give me my hand. Are you with me? We got to take away the script. We got to change the way we see ourselves. See, don't see yourself as an addict. See yourself as a free person that's fighting off the addiction. Don't wake up in the morning and say, man, this has got me bound. I'm just an addict. Man, I'm not being critical here. I'm not being critical here at all. So please don't take it that way. But listen, I am not going to be that. I'm not leaving here today. I recognize that if I trust in the Lord, if I commit myself to Him, I'm not going to lack any good thing. God is a God of blessing. God is a God of prosperity. God is a God that meets me right where I'm at. And yes, I may be in addiction, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be free. And God is going to set me free from that. So I am a free person and I am fighting off that addiction. Go ahead. Make my day. Make my day. He just keeps coming. He just keeps coming. But that's why you got to change who you, who you see yourself at. You gotta change who you think you are. Are you with me? See, God didn't make us insecure. God didn't create us to be addicted and to walk around depressed all the time. Listen, you may have came that way, but you're not leaving that way. Because I've come to tell you that according to the Word of God, that you are fearfully. And wonderfully made. You're His masterpiece. That's why God loves you so much. Because see, you are the workmanship. The New Testament says that you are the workmanship. When God built you, He created you. And no one else is like you. I used to sing a song that says, There is none like you. And in other parts of the song it said, No one else could ever do what I do. And they can't. Sometimes I like to just be riding a motorcycle down the highway. And sometimes I just get to thinking, here I am, I 55. And I'm between Punch Tool and the Plus. And there ain't nobody out there but me. Or I might be on 51, the old deserted highway. And I think for a minute, you know what? There might not be anybody on this whole entire road praising God. So I start praising Him. Huh? And sometimes I feel like really cool. I'm the only one on this road praising God. It's me right here. I'm bad. I'm bad. I'm bad. I get into my 70 because I know I'm praising God. I ain't going to get a ticket, right? <laughs> but then the Lord spoke to me and said, Terry, it doesn't matter if you're in a building with 100,000 people. There is nobody that can praise you like you do. There Are the apple of my eye. Amen. We have to. You've heard it, right? You got the first point, right? We need to change how we see ourselves. It's very simple. I need to move on before I get in trouble. I need to see myself the way that God sees me. That's your second. I want you to see yourself the way God sees you. See, stop seeing yourself the way you see yourself. I want you to see yourself the way that God sees you. I mean, God sees us a whole lot different than we see ourselves. Right. Have you ever read the Old Testament when you get to the book of Exodus? You read the story about Israel that they had been in bondage for many, many, many years. And they were slaves. 
They worked for the Egyptians and, and everything that they worked, they took. They gave them morsels to eat and, and they were a, a oppressed people. They were slaves. They didn't own anything. They didn't have anything. They were slaves. But God said that He was going to set them free. Now listen. I'm not here telling you when God's going to do it, but I'm telling you God will do it. If God said it, that settles it. Doesn't matter if you believe it or not. God said it. It said it. But the time came. The time came and they were living in this slavery and oppression. But, but, but when the time came for God to bring them out, you read it, the plagues and this plague and that plague, but I'm not getting into all that today. When it came time for them to get out, did you ever read what God told Moses to tell them? He required that the children of the Egyptians give all their gold and silver to the children of God. Now I don't know if you got that. God looked over there and He said this. He said, you Egyptians, not only are you going to let them go, not only are you going to turn them loose because I have spoken this, but before they leave, you're going to give them the gold and the silver. You're going to give them the finest that you have. And you're going to give it to them and they're going to walk out with it. They're not stealing it. You're giving it to them and they're walking out. Now, why do you think God did that? I'll tell you why. Because God wanted to change. The way they view themselves. I mean, think about it. There were no 7-Elevens. There were no Chevron stations. There were no camel hockeys. There were no malls. They didn't need any money. But God wanted them to change themselves. He wanted them to get rid of the old image that they had of themselves of being a slave and being and being in poverty their whole life and not ever having anything and just depending upon begging and pleading to have everything. God said they didn't even know what was going on. But God changed the way they saw themselves. Because see, He saw them totally different. We need to see them ourselves the way that God sees us. God sees us as blessed. God sees us as men and women of prosperity. And I'm not just talking about money. God sees us of men and women that are going to change this world. God sees us of men and women that are going to make a difference in our friends and our families. And, and you're going to be somebody that God can use when they go through tough times to speak the good things into their life. Because once you were bound, but now you're free. You see, we need to see ourselves the way God sees us. Can you imagine? Just think with me for a moment. Can you imagine when they, they brought all this and and these families lined up and here comes the Egyptians and they're packing a bag a big old sack and a basket full of gold and, and they set it down there and, and the Israelite family that received it looks and said, huh? What are we going to do with this? And so one of the girls said, I'll show you what to do with that. I ain't never had a pair of them nice gold earrings. I'm going to put that earring in my nose. You know, when her ears, she never had one before. So... And then she looked at her husband and said, Come get yours. And she didn't put it in his ear, she put it in his nose. She said, If it's good for the oxen, it's good for my husband, right? No, all right. And then they had some, that's a dumb, dumb foul. And then they had so much left over, they started looking at their kids and they started taking rings and putting them on their kids' fingers. And, and you see, as parents, all they never known was poverty want and lack. But how do you know God's going to change all that? Amen. God changes all that. Amen. We need to see ourselves the way that God sees us. <coughs> Stop seeing yourself as, as a defeated nobody. Listen, push your past aside. Push yesterday aside. Let's see ourselves the way that God sees us. And all of a sudden, I see a little old twinkle start coming up in their eyes. And that old self-image that they used to have of being a nobody starts to fade away. And all of a sudden, they jump up and they say, Hey, this is it. God is doing what He said He would do. And I believe that for you. Yeah. But here's the final thing. We need to get out of here. 
Number three. We need to start seeing ourselves differently. Starting right now. Today. This is the place. And this is the time. You see, I want you to forget what you may have seen in the past. I want you to forget what you saw yesterday. I want you to forget what you saw when you left home this morning. And right now, I want you to see what God has planned for you. God has big things planned for you. You see, I want you to see yourself blessed. I want you to see yourself successful. I want you to see yourself free from those addictions, and free from that gossip, and free from your past. And, and I want you to see yourself adorned in the blessings of God. You see, sometimes, sometimes we don't know what we have. And yes, there are obstacles that come against you. But you have to declare that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. We have to declare that. See, today I'm going to rise above all of that. I'm going to rise above in my life. Listen, I, I, you know what? If you don't believe in what I'm doing, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Because I'm not doing it for you anyway. Hell yeah. And those who are watching for TV, if you don't like what we're doing, it's okay. We honor you. We love you. But we're not doing it just for you. Amen. Hallelujah. We're doing it because there are God's people, God's vessels out there that have been lied to for too long. And I want to be a voice that's shouting in the wilderness that God loves you and God's come for you. And if He went to the cross for you, He'll come to the green board in Livingston, Louisiana or a biker rally for you. I like the song that says, Though none go with me, still I will follow. Are you with me? Today I'm going to rise above it. Today I'm going to become what God created me to be. And I really don't care who don't like it. You say, wait a minute, Pastor T. No, you wait a minute. Did you forget what I told you at the beginning? If I acknowledge Him, He will direct my paths? Well, first of all, I don't have to worry about where I'm going. I'm going to acknowledge Him and He's going to lead me to wherever He has for me to be. Second of all, I don't have to worry about no weapons because no weapon formed. Doesn't mean that you won't form a weapon against another person. Doesn't mean that another person won't form a weapon against you. Doesn't mean that the devils won't come against you, that the demons, that all of hell won't come against you and try to claw you down. But no weapon formed shall it's my inheritance, by the way. It's my inheritance. It's what God said was mine. And I'm here today, and I, I might have come here defeated. I might have come here with a battle. I might have come here heavy hearted. But I'll tell you what, that's one thing going to happen. I ain't leaving here that way. Can you say amen? amen. I'm not leaving here the way I came. Amen. I'm going to rise above it. I'm going to become what God created me. This morning I was reading this story that stuck out to me, and I'm, I'm closing right here. David, you remember David, little David? Yes. Huh? Remember little David? I bet David Dan could have come up with a thousand reasons why he wasn't going to let him beat Goliath. Maybe a thousand and one. I'm too young, I'm too old, my past is not there, I'm a nobody, I can't put the wrong side of the tracks, my own father don't believe in me. Listen, if your family don't believe in you, don't worry about it. It's about you and God anyway. But bear with me for this second. David could have thought of a thousand reasons why he wasn't going to be able to beat the life. But the Bible says that David didn't run from Goliath. He ran to Goliath. Amen. <laughs> I'm not running from my, I'm not running from what God's called me to do anymore. Amen. 
I'm not running from that addiction anymore and hiding from it. I'm going to run right to it. Because I'm a free man. That Goliath looked at him and he said, What am I, some kind of dog that you come running out here to chase me off this battlefield? You little wormy boy, you, who are you to come out and go to battle with me? David stopped. Reached in his old pocket and pulled out one rock. Left the other ones in there. Put it in a sling. Looked at it and said this. You want to see in just one minute who I am. Did you catch that? You want to see in just one minute who I am. And I believe he cocked his head back and said, Go ahead and make my day. <laughs> If you move the line, I'm going to plant this rock so far in your forehead. Huh? How do we know what happened? Huh? Listen to me. Listen to me. What I'm trying to get you to understand that the size of your battle is a sign of the size of your victory. Do I need to say that? Yeah. The size of your battle may just be the size of your victory. You say, oh, Pastor T, you don't know how big the obstacle that I'm facing. Have you forgotten how big God is? He big. Have you forgotten what God has spoken to your heart of hearts that what He wants to do in your life? Amen? Amen. You see, today you're faced with your past. Amen. You're faced with Faced with your failures. But I don't want you to run away. I want you to put God in His rightful place in your life. This is not just a motivational message, even to those that are watching by television. It's not just to motivate you to think that you can do something. Listen. Elvis Presley sang a song years ago that. A guy by the name of Milo Lefebvre wrote, if I believe it's right, and it went like this. Without them I can do nothing. Without him I be a fool. Without him I would be drifty. Like a ship. Out the sail. Alright, that's the best I can do. But this is what I'm saying. Without God, you can do nothing. All of this that I told you won't work. All of this that I shared with you is useless if you don't have God in the rightful place in His life. And that's why I said earlier, you have what you want, and you want what you have. You see, because I believe that God wants everything. He wants your heart. He just don't want some of it. You know, someone told me a long time ago, they got a sign that says, God is my co-pilot. That's really cool. I mean, I, 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 get the con, I get the concept behind that. But this is what I've learned. If God ain't the pilot, He don't really want to be in the ship at all. Amen. He don't need you to help him steer the ship. Uh -oh. He's the master of the winds. He's the great I am. Amen. You need to stop trying to be the pilot and let God be the co-pilot. Kind of tag along with you like a Santa Claus God. Today I come to tell you, you need to put God in His rightful place in your life. And there is no telling what God can do with you. You'll be free from the your family will be restored. Your marriage can be made whole. Your income can be complete. You can get off food stamps and find a job and educate.
education, the dreams and the visions that you have. But listen to me, you can't do it alone. Amen. And probably the reason that many of us where we are today is because we choose to. We have what we want. And we want what we have. But today, I am fixing to pray. Sorry that I went long. But I want you to have a moment. When I pray, Amen. when I come to you, I want you to see yourself. I want you to change the way you see yourself. You ain't leaving like you can. Amen. I want you to see yourself the way God sees you. And I want you to start seeing yourself right here, right now. I don't care what you saw when you left the mirror. You, when you look in that rearview mirror, when you get on that motorcycle or in that car after a while, you're going to see yourself totally different. Amen. God's going to totally change you today. Can you believe that with me? Amen. Huh? Amen. I want you to be like David. In the moment when I count to three, I want you to take a step up, stand up, take a deep breath. And when I say three and you stand up, I want you to shout, go ahead. Make my day. But you're not telling that to me. You're telling that to the past. Your hurts. Your addictions. Your failures. Your pains. Are you ready? But before I do that, one thing that I have to do. I believe that there are men and women in this building today that you need to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You need to be born again. You need to ask Jesus to come into your heart. Amen. The very real Are you ready? Are you ready? 